Hello, everyone. Um, I guess we'll get started. I'm Doug Strube. I'm with the National Bureau of Asian Research. I'm the assistant director of our Center for Innovation, Trade, and Strategy, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all here today. Um, on behalf of the National Bureau of Asian Research, I would like to thank the Taipei Economic and Cultural Office in Seattle for setting this event up. And I would also like to thank Minister Gong for leading the delegation here. We're, we're pleasured to have you in the audience and participating here. Um, so I'm going to kick it off. Our first speaker providing opening remarks is Director General Daniel Chun from the Taipei Economic and Cultural Office in Seattle. Um, I'll give you a quick intro. Uh, Director Chun, well, yes, he's the Director General of the Taipei Economic and Cultural Office in Seattle. And prior to this, he was Deputy Secretary General of the Taiwan Council for U.S. Affairs, seconded to the Foreign Minister's Office. DG Chun served as deputy director in the political division at the Taipei Economic and Cultural Representative Office in the United States. He also served as section chief in the Department of Northern American Affairs at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Republic of China, and was awarded the model civil servant for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in 2011. So with that, I'd like to welcome him to the stage and get this started. Well, it's always good to see you. And uh, after two years of global pandemic, finally we can get here in person and talk about business. So to start with, Minister Kong, Lieutenant Governor Hack, Bob, and Vice President uh, Robinson. And we also have a uh, Taiwan delegation, uh, friends online, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. So um, just like I said, we have been through this uh, pandemic for over two years. And for the over the, last, over the last two years, I keep on thinking about what can my office bring the good from Taiwan? And how can I make my, my office can bring the U.S.-Taiwan relation to an even higher level? So to answer that, uh, we kind of consider our future life. So it is no doubt that the future will be increasingly digitized, hyper-connected, and global um, data-driven. So e-health, robot, uh, autonomous vehicles, Internet of Things, IoT, artificial intelligence are going to be everywhere. So therefore, ability to synchronize uh, with the fast evolving technology, instant and virtually unlimited wireless connectivity is required. So after this uh, brainstorming and checking both Seattle Bass and Taiwan industries, we identified two areas. One is low earth orbit satellite and the other one is the six, 5G or beyond 5G, sometimes we call 6G, the beyond uh, next generation's communication technology cooperation. So uh, I think those are two uh, are the major areas that the Northwest US and Taiwan can be of potential cooperations. So therefore, later this year, um, my office will also host, co-host another event on low earth orbit uh, satellite cooperation uh, through our help from ETRI, Taiwan. Now Taiwan is the F largest trading partner of the United States. The cooperation on semiconductor and ICT industry has made a significant progress, especially in terms of trustworthy supply chains and commercial secrets and privacy protection. So Taiwan upholds higher standard um, labor rights, protection of intellectual property, fair trade principle, and environmental sust sustainability. So this is why both countries launched the Taiwan-US uh, initiative on the 21st century trade, which is intended to develop concrete ways to deepen economic and trade relationship, advance mutual trade priorities based on shared values, and promote innovation and inclusive economic growth for our workers and business. So I'm very confident to tell you all that this is the right time for our delegation from Taiwan um, to gather here with our Washington-based high-tech industry to talk about uh, U.S.-Taiwan further cooperation on the next-gen digital technology. So in the midst, especially in the midst of the shift of global supply chain, so Taiwan has proved we are a trustworthy partner and always a long-term ally of the United States. So thank you very much for being here, and I wish uh, we can have a very good discussion today. Thank you. Thank you, Director General Chun. Um, next up, we have opening remarks from the National Bureau of, um, of Asian Research. And for these, we have 
Senior Vice President of Information Management and Technology, Carlos Carnikis. Um, he is a certified information systems security professional and holds a Master of Science in Information Resource Management um, and is our Vice President. Thank you, Carlos. Thanks very much. Uh, good evening and welcome to this very timely event on uh, U.S.-Taiwan cooperation and leadership in emerging technologies. Um, we're very grateful to be joined by such a distinguished delegation from Taiwan, uh, including on the government side, uh, Minister uh, Gong and his colleagues from the Department of um, Overall Planning, Department of Industrial Development, Ministry of Economic Affairs, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, we're also grateful to be joined by representatives from the business community and the tech community, tech industry uh, in Taiwan. We hope your time in the United States has been enjoyable uh, so far, and we know it will be productive in deepening tech cooperation between the United States and Taiwan. Finally, we're also joined by representatives from both the public sector and the tech community here in Seattle. NBR is very proud to continue our long history of working closely with Taiwan on, tech, on technology issues. As NBR's point person for cybersecurity, um, I very much understand the big challenge of the PRC's activities, and, and Taiwan has been on the front lines of these activities for quite some time. Uh, today's events will examine prospects for the United States and Taiwan to strengthen cooperation on emerging digital technologies. Uh, we have seen the value of U.S.-Taiwan cooperation on tech issues very clearly in the, in the context of high-tech export controls on Russia. Uh, this has demonstrated the successes that can be had when like-minded leaders in emerging technologies collaborate to advance shared values. This event will focus on emerging information te uh, communication technologies, including 5G and 6G networks. These technologies will shape the future of the global digital order, a topic on which NBR has conducted significant research in the past year. Uh, in that research, we found that the PRC is working to dominate these networks, to control the foundations of, digi of the digital domain, and it's only uh, through close coordination that the United States and Taiwan can push back on these efforts to ensure that the networks of the future will support the liberal uh, rules-based global order. However, this event won't focus only on uh, U.S.-Taiwan strategic cooperation. We also recognize that there's an excellent business case uh, for this cooperation as well. Both economies are innovative and have, they have dynamic tech sectors with complementary uh, and competitive advantages. So to discuss these uh, policy and business opportunities, we have an excellent lineup of panelists and speakers, uh, including uh, Minister Gong, remarks uh, from uh, Senator Rich, who is serving his third term as a senator from Idaho, and uh, Congresswoman uh, Susan Del Bene, who represents Washington State's first district in the U.S. House of Representatives. And before I turn it over to the great speakers, I would remiss if I didn't thank everyone who made this possible. Uh, special gratitude to Minister Gong and his team at NDC, uh, Director uh, Jan Daniel Chun, and our friends at uh, Teco in Seattle, the NBR staff, including uh, Heather uh, Kesmarek, and uh, also to Doug Stroop, uh, who spoke earlier. And finally, uh, my president, uh, Roy Kamphausen, who couldn't be here this evening, asked me to say a few words in Chinese. It's been a few years. I visited Taiwan many years ago. It's been 30 years now, but I will um, I try to welcome our uh, Taiwanese friends also. So, da jia hao, da ki ho. Uh 
呃，活跃非常有影响力，呃，他可以告诉你们，你们来之前，呃，我们在西雅图的天气不太不太好，啊、呃，<笑>每天每天下雨了，呵呵呃呃，在你们来你在你们来之后，呃，太阳出来了，<笑>白头青苍来，啊<笑><笑>、呃，但是呢，呃，天气归天气。呃，都不影响美国、台湾之间呃往来的合作与交流。呃，希望今晚的呃呃会晤呃，在在未来呃新兴呃科技领域的合作关系上能够有所注意。呃，最后希望您的行程顺利、愉快。呃，再一次希望呃呃，欢迎呃，大方下图，呃，谢谢各位。Thank you, Carlos. Um, next up, we are honored to welcome Denny Heck, the Lieutenant Governor of Washington State, who also serves. On the advisory committee of the Export Import Bank of the United States and the Governor's Council of Economic Advisors.、Uh, welcome. Thank you, Doug. I am not going to try and do that. <laughs> You've ruined it for all of us who follow. <laughs> Give him a hand. I am. Honored and grateful and delighted to be here. Thank you for the invitation. It is wonderful to be among friends. More about that in a minute. So thank you.、Um, friendships built on accumulation of transactions, exchanges, relationships are built accordingly, and we have a long history of doing that.、Um, Director General mentioned that it's so good to be. We hope on the backside of the pandemic. I just want to remind those of you who do not know that at the very beginning of this, it was Taiwan that stepped up when we could not produce them and sent surgical masks to the people of the state of Washington. And I thank you for that, sir. I was probably wearing one at some point, and、uh, it, I want to apologize.、Uh, I was. Not wearing the mask often enough because I got COVID on the same day that I was supposed to be, I think, in Bellevue, and receive another gift from the people of Taiwan, certain medical equipment, and、uh, did not have a chance to be there. But today is my chance to extend my appreciation to you all for that as well.、Um, I suppose, on a cursory level, you could look at the depth of our relationship and say, somewhat natural, coming out of the deep economic ties that we have, and that that's certainly the case.、Um, in case you do not know, Taiwan is the consumer, the sixth largest consumer of exports from Washington State in the entire world, sixth largest.、Um, that's a meaningful relationship. That's a material. Relationship, as a matter of fact,、uh, you have new deep ties with a little startup in Washington State.、Uh, I think it's named Amazon. Maybe that didn't translate well. That's what passes for American humor. <laughs>、uh, and of course, we're going to hear from Mr. Robertson about the depth of ties. I'm certain with another little startup, a little bit older startup from Washington State named Microsoft. These are deep ties, and they are important.、Uh, and this is not a one-way relationship. You have a tiny little plant down in Camas, Washington,、uh, where you manufacture chips, wafer tech. In fact, Director General was so incredibly gracious to host me down there many, many months ago.、Um, I understand you're about 20 percent complete of the new plant in Arizona. Seems to me that's not. Beyond the point of return, no return. Should you change your mind, and Sam, why aren't you on that? Poor Commissioner Sam Cho honors us with his presence. So this is 
This is a two-way relationship uh, that is very, very deep. And it's recognized. It's recognized in Washington State just last year. Senator Hasegawa was one of the leaders. We adopted a resolution acknowledging the importance of this relationship, the depth of this report relationship, uh, and the nature of this deep friendship between us. So these are profoundly important economic ties. They're deep. They're incredibly deep. They matter. They are, again, material. But the truth is, as was alluded to earlier, um, that's not the foundation. The foundation is shared values. That set of shared values leads to friendship. We are among friends today, and I am honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Um, next up, we have recorded comments from two members of Congress. Unfortunately, Congress is in session this week, so they couldn't be here in person, um, but they were thrilled about this opportunity and provided recorded remarks. First up, we'll have Senator James Risch, who is Idaho's 28th senator and serves on five committees, including Energy and Natural Resources, Foreign Relations, and as ranking member of the Committee on Small Business and Entre Entrepreneurship. Um, following him, we'll have Susan Del Bene, who is the Congresswoman for Washington's first congressional district in the House of Representatives. And she serves as vice chair of the Ways and Means Committee and co-chair for the Women's High Tech Coalition and the Internet of Things Caucus. Um, so go ahead and roll the videos. Thank you. Hello, I'm U.S. Senator Jim Risch, ranking member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with all of you today. I applaud the National Bureau of Asian Research for convening this event. My home state of Idaho knows well the benefits of a strong economic partnership with Taiwan, especially in technology. Taiwan is Idaho's second largest trading partner. Idaho's largest export to Taiwan is semiconductors and other industrial products. Those are also Idaho's largest imports from Taiwan. This shows the tight linkages between our technology industries, and it's been a great benefit to both countries. The United States must deepen our technology partnerships with allies and partners in the Indo-Pacific and Europe. This should include both civilian and defense technologies. The critical civilian and military technologies of the future will require hardware, software, and supply chains that span across country borders and company lines. Countries and companies that can capitalize upon set standards for and manufacture these technologies will have an unparalleled advantage. Even without the increase of China's technological domination, allied countries would benefit by working together on future technologies. But because of China, we absolutely must do this. If we do not further integrate with Taiwan in this way, we're missing a critical piece of the solution. Taiwan is a linchpin in today's high-tech supply chains due to its institutional knowledge, skilled personnel, and expertise on developing next-generation digital technologies. These efforts require a lot of hard work. We must align our regulatory policies and ensure the strongest technology protection measures. These can be tough conversations, but the reward is well worth it. I'm concerned the United States is not sufficiently leaning into this opportunity for our partnership with Taiwan. We've set up different dialogues, including a new trade dialogue under President Biden. However, it remains to be seen what concrete actions and partnerships will emerge from these efforts. Technology cooperation is important for the whole region, but it's uniquely significant for Taiwan because of growing aggression from the People's Liberation Army. Technology cooperation is a concrete sign of U.S. and international support. Beyond that, it also serves our combined interests to work with Taiwan on technologies that will help it safeguard its critical infrastructure, 
strengthen its cybersecurity, and deter aggression. All Indo-Pacific nations will benefit if we work with Taiwan on the development, manufacturing, and uses of these digital technologies. Thank you again for the opportunity to participate in today's event. I look forward to furthering these efforts in the weeks and months ahead. Hi, I'm Congresswoman Susan Del Bene. It's an honor to help kick off this discussion today. The trade and economic relationship between the United States and Taiwan has been a consistent driver of growth, technological innovation, and prosperity for many years. Taiwan is an especially critical partner for Washington State, where over 40% of our jobs are tied to trade. Taiwan and Washington State are both leaders and innovators in digital trade and technologies that will drive our economies into the future. And I've seen how the importance of setting open and forward-looking rules for the digital economy has evolved throughout my career. As someone who spent many years as a leader in the tech industry, I witnessed the transformative power of the internet firsthand. When I helped launch Windows 95 at Microsoft, less than 1% of the world's population used the internet. Today, more than half of the world's population is online, over 4 billion people. This explosion of internet users has fundamentally changed our global economy and international trade. Trade has gone digital, and studies have shown that digital flows now have a larger impact on GDP growth than trade in traditional goods. Washington State is home to a vibrant tech industry, and digital trade is especially important to our more than 5,000 tech companies and $2.8 billion digital export economy. But digital trade and technology cooperation isn't just about the tech industry. Virtually every industry, from agriculture to manufacturing, increasingly depends on digital tools and data to improve productivity and reach new customers overseas. As technology continues to evolve, foundational regulatory policy will be critical to protecting privacy, cybersecurity, and human rights at home and abroad. The Chinese government continues to take aggressive steps in its authoritarian approach to setting internet standards. The U.S. needs to move quickly to reassert leadership in this area, and Taiwan will be an indispensable partner in helping to negotiate shared digital standards that prioritize consumer protections and human rights. With that in mind, it's important that the U.S. and key allies, including Taiwan, be rule makers, not rule takers, in setting digital trade rules in the Indo-Pacific region. Although Taiwan is not currently a participant in the president's newly announced Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, I'm pleased the United States and Taiwan announced the launch of the Initiative on 21st Century Trade earlier this month. Like IPEF, this initiative will strengthen our economic and strategic relationship with Taiwan in key areas, including supply chains, worker rights, the environment, technology, and digital trade. Through these trade talks with Taiwan and other regional partners, I hope to see strong commitments made to address China and other countries' authoritarian model for the digital economy that favors censorship, coercion, and surveillance over human and worker rights, privacy, the free flow of data, and an open internet. Taiwan's leadership will be critical in this effort. And as a member of the Ways and Means Trade Subcommittee, and the founder and co-chair of the Digital Trade Caucus, I look forward to our continued work with Taiwan on these issues. I want to thank the National Bureau of Asian Research for hosting this important event and everyone who made the trip to our beautiful state of Washington. Thank you and stay safe. Thanks again to the two Congress members of Congress for their recorded remarks. And now we'll move on to Minister Gong. Mingxing Gong is the Minister of the National Development Council in Taiwan. And he has also served as Minister Without Portfolio at the Executive Yuan, Deputy Minister of the Ministry of Economic Affairs, and Deputy Minister of the National Development Council, as well as several other um, high-level government positions. Um, so without further ado, we'd like to welcome Minister Gong.
Yes, thank you. Uh, okay, please. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, later, my colleague help me translate. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. 啊，今天非常高兴，呃，花一点点时间来向各位，呃，报告一下，就是在国际间整个数位转型的趋势之下，呃，台湾跟美国之间，呃，台湾跟美国，呃，之间怎么样的一个合作机会？Very delighted to have this opportunity to share with you about international digital transformation trends and Taiwan-U.S. cooperation. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> OK。事實上,從整個數位的發展的歷程,我們都可以看到,台灣跟美國在數位合作的上面,從1980年代,甚至更早就開始了這樣的合作的機會。從最早的這個PC的時代,到Internet,即便到將近1990年,Internet時代
产生了全世界有三大的一个趋势。And looking into the future, we need to look back to the past, starting from the U.S.-China conflict in 2018 and、uh, COVID-19, and recently Russian-Ukraine conflict and supply chain shift, and all these、uh, lead to three global major issues. 那其中最核心的就是数位转型，那当然还有供应链的移转，跟。啊，去碳的净零转型三大趋势。The core of that is digital transformation and supply chain restructuring and、uh, net zero issues. 事实上，这三大趋势之下，台湾跟美国之间的合作都有非常非常大的空间跟机会。那因为今天时间的关系，我就针对数位转型这个部分来跟各位说说明。And actually, among these three major chains,、uh, Taiwan and United States have ample room for cooperation. But due to time constraint, today I will just focus on digital transformation. 整个数位转型事实上最重要的就就是有三个核心议题。第一个就是有关于 AI 时代的来临，因为不管是 COVID-19 或者等等国际世界的局势来讲，我们的生活形态跟生产的模式已经发生很大的改变。怎么样透过 AI 的方式，大数据的整合跟分析，使得我们过去哦，包括很多的这个垂直的应用领域产生很大的一个变化。这包括啊，数位的医疗也好，或者是智慧的交通也好，啊，或者是智慧的农业也好，都可以因为啊这些 AI 的应用产生很大的改变。There are three key elements of a digital transformation. The first one is AI, and even without COVID-19 or the change of a role、uh, situation, our daily life has been gone through a lot of changes by using big data or by applying vertical applications. For example, we are moving toward the trend of smart health, smart medicine, smart agricultural, etc. 但是要满足这样的应用，它必须要有强大的一些核心，以及它很强大的这个传输的能量 ，data 的传输能量。那这两个核心，右下角就是 semiconductor， 就是半导体的核心必须要更强大，运算能力更强。左半边它的通讯要更顺畅，频宽要更大，速度又够够快。才有办法满足我们刚才讲的 AI 的应用。And to meet the demand of these applications, we need to have stronger data computing, core networking, and semiconductor play a very important role in all of this in terms of computing. And on the left hand side, we need to have a, a faster speed. We need to have broader、uh, band and need to have smooth transmission. 所以为什么？ 5 G， 我们今天代表团到美国来跟美国做合作，为什么是这么重要的议题？台湾的半导体如果可以更进步的话，为什么对全世界来讲是重要的 ？So that is why 5G is so important in Taiwan-U.S. cooperation, and why semiconductor is is so important in this relation. 那以下我就针对这几个面向来跟各位做一个说明。And please allow me to elaborate on three、uh, of the core issues. This is a very simple diagram. Garner has created it in 2020. We can see from 1987 to 2020, 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 So this is a very simple、uh, graphic by Gardner、uh, in telling the output of semiconductor starting from 1987 to 2020 about the output and the percentage. Starting from、uh, original one hundred billion dollars to four hundred billion dollars,、uh, that that marks、uh, the three hundred、uh, billion dollars of increase in terms of its output. 往后的十年之间，也会从
，就在十年当中也会从四千亿美金增加到七千亿美金，就是另外三十三千亿个美金只花十年时间就已经完成。So in the next ten years, it is expected that the output will increase from 400 billion to 700 billion. That the 300 billion increase in ten years. 呃，这主要的它就是悲伤。我们刚才讲的，啊 ，A O A I O T 跟五 G 世代的来临，创造了这么大的啊商业价值跟需求。And the core of that is AIoT and 5G, and because of them, create a tremendous business opportunities and tremendous demand. 半导体所追溢出来的这个商业价值，除了我们刚刚提到的，呃 ，AIoT 跟下一世代的通讯之外，事实上，它对于啊，甚至于大家所关心的国防的议题也好，啊，甚至于这个啊，医疗的器材也好。甚至于啊 ，smart machine 也好，或者是这个所有的绿能产业的发展，都是非常非常重要的基础。A、semiconductor has created tremendous、uh, opportunities, business opportunities,、uh, including AIoT and、uh, next generation telecom, covering the、uh, wide range of applications, including national defense,、uh, medical devices, smart machine, and green energy. 所以简单的来讲，就是整个国际未来的社会，除了国防上的需要之外啊，啊，不管是数位转型也好，或是医疗照护也好，甚至于整个能源的转型，它的很大的 basic 核心，基本上就是在半导体。So, uh, semiconductors play the key role in terms of national defense, uh, biomedicine and energy transmission, etc. 在通讯的领域里面，事实上，美国政府事实上也看到了很重要的五 G 世代时代来临，去因应这样的数位时代的一些转变。好，所以为什么在二零二零年的时候十一月，他会通过了五 G 的啊相关的法案，提供了很大的一些资金上的支啊这资助，来支持这个五 G 的一些发展，尤其是在 Open Ray 的部分，就是开放式的啊这个 Ray， 就是开放式的架构。That is why the U.S. House of Representatives、uh, passed the Open RAN 5G Act on November 2020, provide a huge amount of、uh, budget for the United States to deploy for 5G Open RAN development. 那这个时代的左边，我们就可以看到说，现在在台湾针对 5G Open RAN 的这个实验场域的部分，事实上其中就有很大的部分是。台湾的企业跟美国的企业共同合作来进行的。And on the left hand side of the slide, you can see the application scenarios that have been done in Taiwan in its various testing grounds. And actually, these are the results of the cooperation between the U.S. and Taiwan businesses. 比如说核心网络的部分，事实上这个 a p p n 呃，应该他说现在现在是微软的哈，它已经被微软 acquire。比如说，在这个传输的部分，啊 ，Cisco 哈等等的一些情况，都扮演很重要的角色。For example, in the right hand side, you can see the core network or transmission system. There are U.S. companies participating in that, like Microsoft or Inventec and Cisco. 那这个是整个 ICT 的这个 slide， 它前。从核心的半导体一直到最后的应用领域，那这其中 Open Ray 的这个通讯呢，是扮演着中间串联很重要关键性的角色。那下面这个框框里面就是 Open Ray 很重要的，那其中里面有一些对台湾来讲有一些啊，台湾的企业很重要 ，Involve 在这里面啊，事实上这些厂商也都在我们现场上很多代表团。As you can see, that Open RAN plays a very important part of the semiconductor applications, and the representatives of Taiwan's businesses engaged in Open RAN are here today. 有了半导体为核心，到后来的这个五 G 的通讯的设备，那就可以应用在后面最后的很多的应用领域，包括我们刚刚提到的，呃，这 smart medical 也好了，或者 smart 这个。
agriculture 啊。等等的一些情况，就可以把它发展出来。If we have semiconductor and the 5G open room, then we can have various application scenarios that I just mentioned, like smart medicine, smart agriculture, etc. 啊、yeah. ，OK。那我们也我们也 review 了，就是美国政府在二零二二年，也是今年的二月份啊，也提供了。将来针对美国有一些关键跟新兴科技的领域，一定要发展的领域到底有哪些？那我们筛选的其中 review 的其中的十九项，事实上跟台湾事实上是非常关系非常密切的。那我们可以把它分成四大领域。And we also review the 2022 critical emerging technology list of the United States, and we define 19 out of them that have very close relations with Taiwan, and we、uh, categorize them into four. 最左下角就是半导体，我们刚才特别提到的。第二项就是啊，下一世代的通讯。第三项就是比较先进的这个啊，制造。第四项就是有关于 space 的，好，相关于低轨道卫星的一些发展。And the first one is that I just mentioned semiconductor, and the second one is the next generation telecommunication. Third one is the advanced manufacturing or smart manufacturing, and the fourth one will be the space. 我们这一次的 Select US 的代表团。在特殊的这个类别的这个分团里面，就涵盖了这些项目。那我们这个代表团主要就是第二项跟第四项。And our Taiwan delegation are split into two groups covering the four, and this Taiwan delegation covers the second and the fourth of these areas. 在这个同时，事实上还有其他的这个半导体的代表团正在跟。啊，美方的其他厂商做一些沟通，其他的包括一些无人自驾车也好，或 Loba 也好，也都有生，呃、啊，不，也都有不同的这个呃代表团在做啊互动。And our semiconductor delegation are having discussions with the United States and other industries that. A、Taiwan delegation covering other industries are also having interaction with the U.S. partners. So, why did I just mention that from 2016 to 2020, Taiwan and the United States relationship has entered a new development and opportunity? We can see that the cooperation and interaction are multi-sided. So that's why I say, starting from 2016 to 2020, and even now, Taiwan-U.S. industrial cooperation have create, have seen new opportunities and new development, and I can define that as comprehensive. 那我要特别提到的就是说，台湾跟美国在这些领域都是在国际间，事实上是排在前面的。强强合作以后所创造的这个市场价值跟对全世界的贡献，都是非常巨大的。I want to emphasize that both Taiwan and U.S. are leading in these areas around the world. So once we cooperate with each other, we can make tremendous contributions to the world in terms of output and in terms of our efforts for the entire world. 所以我一直认为。台湾跟美国的合作，它不仅是商机的创造，事实上也对世界是是责任，因为我们的合作如果慢下来，全世界就慢下来。So I always think that U.S.-Taiwan cooperation are not just to create business opportunities, but also share the responsibilities. If our pace slow down, the entire world slow down as well. 所以我说，台美之间的合作，我们可以先从包括 AI 推五 G 半导体整个合作开始，然后在个别两个国家，事实上示范性的应用领域，我们就开始做实验。台美国有一点二兆的基础建设，现在要等着 build up 起来。台湾有啊八年八千多亿台币的这个基础建设，也需要发展起来。我们有了这么好的 solution， 都可以在两个国家里面开始从事这样的基础建设制造。第三步，我们要把这些成果 solution 扩展到全世界去。
让其他的国家也可以享受到这么好的 solution。So we can start from AIoT, 5G, semiconductor, and Taiwan provides various testing grounds, as I just mentioned. And secondly, uh, we know that uh, the United States just passed the Infrastructure Investment and Employment uh, Act, providing 1.3 trillion for infrastructure. Uh, on Taiwan side, we uh, allocated 800 billion for eight years to uh, focus on forward-looking uh, infrastructure infrastructure projects. So we can start from uh, this. And the third one is that if we uh, come up with uh, wonderful solutions, we can promote them to the entire world to make contribution. So let's get started from Seattle, Washington State today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Gong. Gong. Um, and finally, we have Tom Robertson, who is the Corporate Vice President and Deputy General Counsel at Microsoft, where he leads the corporate, external, and legal affairs team supporting the Experiences and Devices Group responsible for Office, Windows, Microsoft Surface Devices, and various other products and services. Um, and prior to Microsoft, Mr. Robertson served as Associate General Counsel in the United in the office of the United States Trade Representative. Um, I'd like to welcome Mr. Robertson. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Mr. Gong, for your remarks on digital transformation trends and Taiwan's impressive digital capabilities. Taiwan is a critical player in the global high-tech supply chain given its advanced R&D capabilities in semiconductors, 5G, telecom, and other ICT-related fields. This success is due in no small part to the marriage between Taiwan's innovative culture and the sound ICT development environment that Taiwan's policymakers have put in place. This creates opportunities both for domestic innovation and U.S.-Taiwan technology partnerships. The level of these partnerships is reflected by the fact that, according to AmCham Taiwan, Taiwan is the eighth largest U.S. investment location in the Indo-Pacific region, and Taiwanese investment in the U.S. has doubled since 2015. Taiwan has long been on the top 10 list of U.S. trade partners, and it's great to see that Taiwan reached number eight in 2020, jumping a level that year. I have read recent remarks by Minister Gong uh, in which he spoke about the policy challenges created by the dynamic of an aging society and a low birth rate. This is a phenomenon that we see in Taiwan, the United States, and many other parts of the world. Addressing this dynamic will require, as Microsoft's CEO Satya Nadella has said, an acceleration of what he calls tech intensity where increasingly intensive use of technology can help societies realize the productivity gains needed to counterbalance these societal and demographic trends. Immigration policy is certainly part of the puzzle to solve here, but it's unquestionable that tech intensity is going to be part of the solution. Now, we at Microsoft fully embrace Minister Kung's call for cooperation in the area of digital transformation. Um, he referenced during one of his slides the fact that Microsoft is participating with Taiwanese partners in a number of different areas. Two of the areas on that slide were smart manufacturing and smart disaster relief. And in fact, we are partnering in that area, in both of those areas, with Pegatron. Pegatron, we're, we're working with Pegatron to leverage our 5G cloud native technology to create innovative applications for smart uh, factories. We're also partnering with Pegatron through our Azure space team to build an end-to-end -end solution using satellite as a backhaul for firefighters and first responders to communicate in the event of a catastrophic event like a break in the undersea cable. That project achieved an exciting milestone last week when they successfully deployed a space antenna via a 5G link between a fire department in Taiwan and a medium Earth orbit satellite. And it's fantastic to see that progress. 
This is the Azure space team's first public safety project in all of Asia. And this project would not have been possible without support from the NDC and the broader Taiwanese government. Thank you for that. We will continue to work, look for ways to partner with Taiwan counterparts to build solutions that drive our customers' digital transformation and ensure their long-term competitiveness and success. Now, I want to shift gears a bit uh, for a moment um, and reflect on the fact that Minister Gong identified climate change as a major global issue in his remarks. And I understand uh, that he announced in March a roadmap for Taiwan to achieve net zero emissions by 2050. And he has pledged to develop an economy that either emits no greenhouse gases or offsets its emissions, which is fantastic. Uh, sustainability is also front and center for Microsoft, uh, which has committed to be carbon negative, zero waste, and water positive by 2030. And importantly, we are actively working across our supply chains, including in Taiwan, to achieve these sustainability goals. And I want to just touch on three ways in which we're doing this. Um, first, we're designing for sustainability. We have set carbon reduction targets for all of our new pro pro uh, products with the goal of significant improvements generation upon generation. We are also making our products more repairable, and uh, such as the, the most recent Surface devices. And we are establishing more options for device repair all of which should significantly reduce waste and greenhouse gas emissions. Second, we are building sustainable products. Uh, we have realized double digit uh, percentage reductions in carbon in our products generation upon generation. And we recently launched an ocean plastic mouse that contains 20% recycled plastic that's sourced from plastic waste recovered from both the oceans. And some of our products have already achieved 100% recyc recyclable packaging. And last, um, I would point out that we're looking for insights to achieve, to advance our own sustainability uh, goals and support the sustainability goals of our customers. We're developing so uh, solutions to enable the selection of lower carbon components at the early stages of design and sourcing of our products that we can use and that others can use. We have also built dashboards and calculators that allow our customers to estimate the impact of their use of our products in calculating their own uh, carbon footprint. And last but not least, we have announced the, the launch of the global general availability, including in Taiwan, of Microsoft Cloud for Sustainability earlier this month, uh, which will provide one platform for integrating and accelerating our customers' sustainability initiatives. So in sum, uh, we are honored to partner with many uh, players in Taiwan and around the world in a range of areas to realize and even accelerate global digital transformation in a sustainable way. And we look forward to doing much more in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. All right, and that wraps up the first half of this session. Um, I want to thank you all for attending.